The town downhill, Snow King, first time this year. 1,700 feet of climbing and just over two miles. But it's really runnable, it's really fun. So I'm headed up, then we're gonna talk three ways to instantly improve your climbing in on hills. Go in there, let's go. Boom, just like that. There's the base, here's the summit. Well, felt really good. And this is the first time I've done Snow King this year, normally, in previous years, I would have done this maybe up to 10 times already, and it's just the second week of June. But like I've mentioned in other videos, I'm doing a lot of things differently this year. And one thing that is different specific to being on Snow King is that I'm not doing a lot of long, hard, or I should say long, moderate climbs. This is so steep. First mile was 685 feet of climbing. So it gives you an idea of the grade but this is so steep that you almost kind of have just one gear. And so I've eliminated a lot of that out of my training and done more shorter, harder repeats. And I can feel it really has paid off. I, like I said, I really felt good, felt a control. My endurance felt great. My strength felt great. I did it. I need to go back. I didn't specifically look at my PR because I didn't want to have that in my mind. I just wanted to run how I felt, but I think I'm close to my PR, which is a great sign again for June. One thing that's missing is that when I was in a good groove, especially on steeper stuff, I noticed I wasn't hitting the watts that I eventually want to hit. And that's just natural, you know, at this part of the season, eventually that strength endurance will come around. And as my shorter, harder hill repeats lengthen, that will come around. So that's what I'm gonna look for later in the summer. All right, so let's get right into three tips that will immediately improve your climbing. Number one is we wanna focus on getting leg extension. And so I want to describe this by talking about what we don't wanna do, is that we don't wanna to get too much lean when we're climbing up a hill. One, that puts, most of our upper torso's weight above us or in front of us kind of pulling us down which makes it hard to have high cadence we'll talk about cadence in a minute okay so we want to find a good balance we don't want to lean back either we just want to find a good neutral stance with our torso so that when we strike the ground we don't want to keep our knee too bent and again, I'm gonna show you what not to do because it's easier to describe it. We don't want to, and I'm gonna exaggerate, we don't wanna keep our knees bent like this. See that? Okay, that shuts our glutes off, shuts down our hip flexors. We don't, we don't get a lot of work with our hip flexors, which then creates a lot of tightness here, puts all the stress here and shuts our glutes off. So that's the vicious cycle we want to avoid by striking the ground and driving into the ground and getting that leg extension right there. We don't want to go straight with it. And it's going to depend a little bit on your speed, but again, we don't want to keep the knee bent like that. We want to get that action right there as we run up the hill. By keeping things here, again, it's gonna shut everything down. So think about, strike the ground, drive into the ground to propel yourself forward and get that leg extension here. If you're running really fast, that leg's almost gonna come straight, which then brings us into number two, is that we want to avoid a lot of ankle flexion and that is really towing off and pushing off with our ankle our legs our glutes are much stronger than our ankle and we don't want to rely 
on our ankle for propulsion. We want to strike the ground at a neutral angle, ankle, and get that foot back to our foot strike as quickly as possible. So it's just right here. We don't want any, any toe off and really getting a lot of ankle extension there. We want to avoid that because that what else that does is that when we land, we want to get rely on our elastic energy of our calf and our ankle in our, or sorry, our, <clears throat> our arch. As soon as we land, there's elastic energy that's stored that's going to spring us forward. And if we land and then try to get ankle extension, we're negating all that spring. And it's just going to take a lot more <clears throat> time before we're off that leg. And that is what's important is because now we want to have a really high cadence. And if we land, drive into the ground, get our force, get our leg extension, and then quickly get off, as quickly as we can get off that foot, the better. We're not spending a lot of time on each foot. And that's the key to climbing. We want to be nice and quick, nice and easy with our cadence, very quick, okay? A great way to practice this, if you don't have steep hills, Again, I mentioned in other videos, steep hills is the greatest way to really work on getting that leg extension. But if you don't have steep hills, go to a flight of stairs and naturally just run up the stairs. And notice your action that you normally naturally have running up the stairs. That's what we want. Naturally, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do a lot of ankle extension. So again, avoid a lot of ex ankle extension and relying on that to propel drive force into the ground with the leg and then get off of it. The third key, and it's no different than running with good form on flat terrain or even downhills, is that we don't want to reach to get our speed or to get our, our distance per stride, okay? That's just gonna slow us way down and again, slow our cadence down. We wanna keep everything here. So when things get technical or very steep, you got to stay patient and stay here. Don't get impatient and start to reach up the hill. Okay, we don't, we don't want to reach. And again, doing the flight of stairs will help with this because now they're at a fixed, a fixed level and you can't reach unless you skipped, skipped a step. And if you skip the step, you have to provide more force into the ground rather than necessarily reaching. So it's it's the force into this ground that's gonna get us our distance. We still wanna be here. And again, if it gets technical, you're just working around it. Stay patient. Don't, don't leap over things. Stay in your groove, okay? And with that comes quick cadence. Again, cadence, especially going up a grade, what is, how are we gonna mostly get our speed and our efficiency is with cadence because we're working against gravity and we can't get our distance per stride as much as on flat ground. So cadence is huge. So you don't wanna reach. You wanna get off your feet as quick as possible. Okay, and that will help you stay into a rhythm. Another thing that'll help you stay into this rhythm is swing your arms. Okay, if you're having a hard time sequencing your cadence, swing your arms a little quicker, the legs will follow. All right, three easy steps to work on to immediately get better. All right, it's another beautiful day in the hole and hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna head down Snow King and showing you the grade as I go down of what I came up. A lot of times it's easier to show it that way to it really show what the grade looks like versus showing it going up the hill. And while I do that, I'm just gonna give some coaching tips um, how to climb as I'm going downhill. So again, even though I'm running downhill, I'm talking about when I ran up, all right? I'm off to Park City later this afternoon, celebrating my daughter's eighth grade graduation. So we're replacing one mountain town for another mountain town. Hopefully I can come to you with a quick one tomorrow morning and uh, enjoy a little bit of Park City. So, all right, see you guys. You're good, keep coming. I'm going down, you're going up. Stay in the groove. And so the start. 
a little technical, a little loose. Good steep grade to start. Got some nice light through here. This is a nice section, but it's the second switch back from the start and it's just a, a nice way to kind of recover a little bit from that first really steep switch back at the start of the climb. So you're just kind of settling in at this point, staying patient, not getting discouraged by how you feel because you'll, you'll recover. Okay, so down right down there in the parking lot is the start. So I'm about essentially two switchbacks away from start. And you can see the grade. It's essentially maybe 300 meters. We're climbing a couple hundred feet. So that's just how steep the start is. All right, here's just kind of a, a little bit of a through the tree section I like to take. It's not part of the primary trail, but I always take it. And it's kind of the last part of what I consider mentally my warm up before. I get to that that nice grade and be able to really kind of start getting into the game. So we're up to this point. I'm really just, again, mindset is just warming things up. And I'm also going to be doing a race in September that has a initial climb right out of the start gun you're basically starting and climbing 2,000 feet right away and so I'm when I'm doing snow king I park and I don't get a warm-up in on the flat grounds and this is because I want my legs my brain my body to get used to starting to climb right away now I'll get a warm-up in the race and for other types of workouts. But for this, I want my body to have to get used to just like sucking air right away. My legs getting used to going vertical right away. It's just gonna help race day feel a lot better. And I know Joe, you're watching. Joe's one of my athletes from Steamboat and we're gonna be working a lot on this. So as he continues to acclimate to living in Steamboat now and a lot of his races too, start right with an immediate climb and here's a really technical section that i just try to stay patient on again still kind of the warm-up so i really really try just to pick my pick my way around the rocks and don't get impatient by reaching and lunging over rock we don't want to we want to move around things we don't want to try to lunge or step up and over things and exert our energy okay this is a really nice section it's usually in the shade it's after all the the technical aspects of the beginning the steepness of the beginning here you can start kind of just settling down and getting into a good rhythm the grade is really runnable and it's just a really nice section to start getting your head and your legs in the game for the rest of the climb it's another Teton shot Beautiful, beautiful day. It's gonna be warm. Already is warm. Look at this shot. Good shot of the Tetons in the lift. Tetons are right there. Still lots of snow. It's gonna be another month yet. Got the ropes course coming up here, pretty cool. Hey. They embedded the whole ropes course into all the natural features, which is really cool. Zip line. And here's the ski patrol tent for the winter. One of the lifts, water line, electrical line. A lot of the Olympic teams come here early season because our our grade is so steep and we get snow real early in the season. So it's perfect for their World Cup training. And this is a section that's um, 
not quite as steep so I can run this pretty well. And I just, again, just try to stay stolid. This is where I, I look at my heart rate and I try to peg it right just below threshold. So it's just nice and solid, but still kind of saving myself for those, the, next, the next four switchbacks. So a good time to really stay focused and make up time, make up speed because the, the great more gradual and this is a time I can take advantage of that and run a little bit faster. So um, this is a crucial time. It's not a time for recovery. And this is kind of the first of the what I consider the last four steep switchbacks and where it starts to really kick up. And again, I just, this is where I kind of just get into my groove and get in. I really kind of focus on my breathing, two breaths in, one out. So I can really kind of just stay rhythmic and really just kind of stay focused. Cadence, foot strike, getting off my feet and just everything being efficient, but keeping it, keeping it a hard, steady effort without again, diminishing returns. All right, this is the shortest, steepest section. So here I just really go to cadence and avoid getting impatient. I almost try to make it as easy as I can because I'm not gonna make up much speed because the grade's so steep. So I don't wanna work harder or slower. Hey guys. Okay, this spot levels off a little bit before the summit push. And I, here I, I get a little bit of recovery maintaining cadence and then really kind of just a, a few second reprieve before the last summit push. This is a longer and more steady switchback, which I just kind of stay into a groove until this flatter section. All right, here's the summit, the last of the steep switchbacks. And again, remember, this is what I'm finishing with and got to stay patient here I wanted to I was right at red line in it and I just kept telling myself to stay patient and focus on cadence when I start to fatigue I tend to get impatient you can't get impatient when you're climbing you've got to go to your cadence